Hey everybody, my name is Bill Harvey with the Auto Sales Academy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. You know, this time of the year, I get a lot of calls, I mean, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns for that matter. And, and I get really concerned for you from the perspective that, um, can I do this? Meaning, can I do the job? Can, can, I, can I survive? Can I get through all that, that is presented in front of me in terms of my payments and sales? And uh, this, is a, this is the primary reason why so many automobile dealers, average ordinary automobile dealers struggle with this time of the year. And I mean by Q4 as this time of the year. I don't mean by the holiday season. I don't mean by post Thanksgiving and post Black Friday. I mean by the seasonality aspect of automobile sales. And really, I don't think it matters where you live in the world with respect to seasonality. For those in the Southern Hemisphere, it's coming around to the summertime, and it's just a great time to be selling automobiles. And for those of us living in the Northern Hemisphere, even in the warmer climates of South America, or pardon me, Southern North America, then there is going to be those times where because of just seasonal effects and change and shorter days and longer evenings and a little bit cooler weather, our customers are exactly the same as ourselves. So there's a little bit of a hibernation effect that takes a hold and it slows us down. So this is where social media can get really exciting and be absolutely fantastic and can really be your savior at this time of the year because social media, if anything else, the one thing that we can get out of it for the automobile industry, and I'm including power sport being ATVs, UTVs, snowmobiles, and side-by-sides, because those vehicles are at the same price as our automobiles. The one thing that we can get out of all of this is that there has never been, and it may change in the future. Facebook has hinted at it a couple of times, but there's never been a better time for us to be able to advertise at such a rate that it is so affordable, we just can't turn a blind eye to it. So what I'm talking about is an organic strategy, not necessarily a paid strategy. I think a paid strategy is a fantastic idea if you have the budget to be able to do so. But an organic strategy will give you an opportunity to reach out to friends and family because really what we're talking about today, and if you want to learn more about this in our system of nine steps and those three phases in order to be able to get you to predictable, consistent sales every single month, that if you are struggling to hit your targets, if you're really hoping that this month, the manufacturer would come along with some fantastic offer and a program that would just rescue you from this, this black hole that you kind of find yourself spinning in, working really, really hard, but not getting a whole lot of results, then social media can be that, that out for you. Because what it does is it creates, and you would learn all about it in the one system of the three phases or nine steps of our manifesto, especially in the step number four, prospect harvesting, which we're going to touch on today. And most importantly, leveraging apps and technology that can really help you get to that level and achieve the targets that you want. What we're talking about is activities that harvest prospects, not activities for prospecting, because that's cold calling and emailing and jumping on social media and just trying to post, which, you know what happens, what I see more than anything, and now let me know in the comments, comment below, if this happens to you as it happens to me, you kind of sit down and you, you're trying to decide, what should I write about? What should I post? Because social media, it's all about engagement. And I think that term has been so overused, especially for us in automobiles, and including power sport, which is a perfect definition of high ticket. When it comes to high ticket products, an automobile being the second greatest, most important financial decision that somebody makes next to purchasing a house. And for so many, purchasing a house may be a distant dream at this point in time, maybe not over a lifetime, but at this point in time, it may be a very distant dream because of the sudden rise of inflation, driving interest rates, and consequently interest rates at the bank, and consequently monthly payments, and the list goes on and on, and the reasons why you may not be rushing out to purchase house. But the bottom line is, when it comes to social media, I think it's been the term of driving engagement has been 
superficially used and ineffectively leveraged at our end. And I'm speaking from experience. Like I do it all the time. And just drop a comment below and give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to my channel and all the rest of it. And of course, this is free training for you to go through. And I struggle getting that engagement because at the end of the day, I think so many of us are just watching it in the moment at the time for the content that is relevant to us. And I get that. I completely understand. However, on the other side of the equation, when we're selling automobiles, and especially this is what happens at my dealership when I go in, and this time of the year, we're idling down to shut down for the winter time because we have that freedom and flexibility to do so. My guys go away on holidays for the entire winter. One's a skier, one goes to Florida. <laughs> Funny dichotomy of how they work. But the bottom line is, this time of the year, we start to hibernate a little bit. And so diving into a social media campaign to driving engagement, to getting people commenting, and interacting with you while it is possible, and I'm gonna share with you some tactics today on how to do so, I think it's a little bit overused. I don't think that necessarily has to be our goal with respect to social media. What our goal needs to be with respect to social media is just to be top of mind. We just want to make sure that that customer, when, when they think about purchasing an automobile, that we are the ones that are top of mind. And you capitalize and do so by the post that I wrote on Monday, that value post, hopefully you thoroughly enjoy that and get a lot of value out of it, educating our customers. We educate our shoppers on products, we educate them on payments, we educate them on lease versus financing, we educate them on putting money down to be in an equity position throughout their, their entire loan. And I don't think a lot of us think in that capacity. So when it comes to harvesting prospects for our sales, we can leverage all the information that we already have that you're that you're familiar with without having to go and look at that shiny object and find something that is new in order for us to be able to create number one activities right now this time of the year that you can leverage harvesting prospects as opposed to sitting and waiting waiting for the up bus to stop in waiting for the customer to show up and and see what we have and want to buy what we have and think that it's an amazing time of year to do so i think a lot of people at least in the northern 48 in canada are thinking is now really a good time to be purchasing an automobile other than the economy other than inflation other than interest rates other than vehicle selection is now a good time to purchase an automobile because i need to drive it through the salt the sand the dirt the grind the dust the snow risking an accident albeit they could be standing in front of you, calling you or emailing in why they want to purchase a new vehicle because it has all those magnificent driving dynamics, which will make winter inclement weather driving. Remember, we get rain in the winter every once in a while till the January thaw. It comes around like clockwork, exactly like holiday season rolls around. It's exactly like seasonality and our customers go into hibernation as the days get shorter and the nights are longer. The January thought comes around and customers know that when the rain lands on the ground, it'll freeze. And maybe this is the reason why they're thinking about moving to shiny, newer, faster, the latest and greatest technology. Only the difference being they don't really know how affordable it can be. And so they're thinking that, do I drive it through the winter? Do I do I experience the stone chips and, and the, the sandblasting and the pitting of the windshield and the spraying or, or the dropping of salt and the spraying, I'm making, making reference to salt brine. If you don't, if your state, if your province doesn't use salt brine, good for you. Don't definitely don't encourage them to do so unless you're trying to create a trade cycle for yourself, like in Ontario and Quebec, that is really quite fast because my goodness, that, that brine gets in everything. But I'm, I'm, I digress a little bit and to keep me on track here. What we're going to talk about today, what I want to share with you with social media, not so much from an engagement perspective, but what you can do to drive that traffic, to harvest those prospects that does drive engagement. And the first thing that you can do is, this is as simple as it is, pick the app. Just pick an app. Now, I, I am absolutely certain when I say, if you're on Instagram or if you're on Facebook, you have selected an app that you are familiar with, you like the way it operates, you probably spend, as the statistics fully delineate for us on a regular basis, at least a half an hour a day, and I think that statistic is way off. I think the statistic is much higher.
higher than that. But the secret is not to do everything, but to do one thing really, really well. And this is what I mean by pick it up. Be it Facebook, be it Instagram, be it TikTok, be it LinkedIn, be it any one of the other. And there's lots of apps, WhatsApp, and you could go down a rabbit hole of how many magnificent apps there are. But I would always encourage you to leverage the largest one because that's where the big audience is and that's where your customers are hanging out. So again, the giants, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, to some extent, LinkedIn, right? Twitter may, may arrive quicker and more effectively in front of LinkedIn for you, but depending on the product, meaning the brand and the segment of the market you are in, LinkedIn can be extremely beneficial this time of the year as those executives, those entrepreneurs, those high income earners are seeing the year end roll in for them and they may want to treat themselves. And this is where you can have, as I have encouraged so many of my clients to do so, pursue a very aggressive LinkedIn tactic to attract shoppers to you. That may not happen until January. They generally don't get their check as soon as they see the bottom line rolling in, but you planted the seed and that's the secret. Again, the secret before planting the seed is pick an app. That's all that you have to be and That's the only place that you, that you have to be in. The second thing that you want to do immediately with a social media endeavor, it's not a social media campaign. The campaign is more of a paid strategy. The strategy is a combination of tactics, all working harmoniously together in order to order in order for you to be able to achieve your objective. And that objective could be sales, that objective could be gross, that objective could be top of mind, exposure, overcoming obscurity. The bottom line is when you pick the one app, the second thing that you must do immediately, and you may already have an app that you're very familiar with. Again, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook right now watching this, and of course in the replay on LinkedIn and on YouTube, you want to make sure your profile speaks to the fact that you are an automobile salesperson or a power sports salesperson. It absolutely amazes me to this day, the number of profiles that I go into. And the only profiles I go into are individuals that are students or about to become a student or a client, pardon me, and those individuals that are reaching out for coaching or any individual that I've made a free offer of a strategy session with, and I will link a, a, I will put a link in the comments below right after we finish this live session of how you can access me, get access to me one-on-one -on -one for a strategy session call. It amazes me how many don't have a robust or more importantly, not even robust, but an accurate profile. Your profile has to stay, stay somewhere in there that you're an automobile sales professional. Now, if you are the best automobile sales professional within your dealership, then it should say that in your profile. That would be absolutely amazing and a real feather in your cap. And Customers are going to creep you. Make no mistake. They are going to go and look at your social presence. They are going to go and verify that there isn't a bad Google review or a bad Yelp score and whatever other consumer review sites there are out there. In fact, even if there are, with a dynamic profile and in your profile, especially in your discussion section of Facebook, you could feature customer testimonies at the very top. So if somebody did in fact find a bad comment about you somewhere, that that can be diluted or even better, justifying all the good comments that you've had before. And you've got great comments. If you've been selling automobiles for 30 days, you should have right now, if, you've, if you're an average ordinary salesperson between four and six sales per month this time of the year, then if you've been on the floor for 30 days, like from November 13th to, the, to December 13th, you should have four to six customer testimonials from the customer experience or the customer satisfaction indicator. Those are the ones that you can post in your own feed in the discussion area easily and quickly and start populating a proper discussion area. This is your personal profile. 
and you can put that there. Now, the second part of the equation to that professional profile is that you need to start posting. And just as I hinted right away, having those customer testimonials, that third party uh, testimonials, social proof, in other words, as, as much as what the digital advertising and marketing world like to change our words, the bottom line is it still speaks to the same thing. When a customer is deciding, are you the salesperson they want to deal with, having those posts of social proof that you're already getting, and you don't have to make that stuff up, you just need to copy and paste or just retype the words if, if you can't copy and paste their comments moving forward. You can just summarize the stars. You can summarize the questions that are specifically related to you. If the survey score wasn't great, based on the dealership experience or the, the automobile, but your section of the customer experience score and the customer satisfaction indicator was excellent, then only post that. In fact, I would only ever encourage you to post just the section, just the questions that relate to you. And if that is new to you and you're not really familiar with what I'm talking about, again, I'm going to link below an opportunity to be able to reach out to me and you can ask me these questions directly or ask your sales manager or your business manager or your seasoned pro what are the questions that directly relate to me. And those are the things that you want to track for yourself. Now, content is the next thing. So we've picked the app, we've got our profile, we've decided that we are going to start doing this posting thing. And content is the part that I think so many people struggle with. And you don't need to because when you think about when the customer comes in to purchase an automobile from you, you naturally educate them on the best way to buy that automobile. The best way could be right now as we've gone through the inventory shortage. For those of you that, that have endured those absolutely unprecedented times, you know what I'm talking about, that we're just sharing with them. This is the only one. We're not going to get another one for a very long period of time. If you want it, if you need it, if you can do so right now, I would encourage you to go with it. That is what we were doing. And that's what you could have been posting the entire time throughout that inventory shortage. Now, as we recover from the inventory shortage, now as demand is starting to settle and supply is climbing and creeping up, and this could be the reason why you're here and saying, hey, Bill, I know I'm not selling the same number of vehicles that I was selling last quarter or, or last half of the year or last year or the year before that. Or you may be saying, Bill, I'm selling the same number of vehicles, but I'm noticing this. My grosses are going down. Consequently, my income is going down. How do I preserve all of that? Well, well there's a number of ways. This, that is not the discussion, the topic that we're going to be having today. But by posting great content and citing the very example that your income is going down because selling prices are coming down, because gross is eroding, is content that you could share on your social media feed with your audience that now is becoming an excellent time to purchase an automobile. And of course, it's year end and it's close out. And these are all the content things that you can talk about. But there's a strategy. So let's talk about the first tactic, and that is educating the customer on trade in value, interest rates, the advantage of putting money down, how to stage your trade in before coming in, all of which populates your content. You're basically just talking about the stuff that you would talk about when a customer is sitting in front of you. You may even want to give some thought and consideration to this, turning on your smartphone to record a conversation through voice notes. At least that's what Apple has. Android, somebody help me out. Post a comment below what, what Android uses for voice notes or download anything off the net that you regularly use. And you can record your conversation for the purpose of content that you could leverage later on in a social media campaign. You see, what I get on a regular basis is, Bill, I don't want to do social media because, well, quite frankly, it's a lot of work. And you've said it before, this is the second greatest financial decision that people make next to buying a house. Nobody is going to buy a vehicle as a result of me posting on social media. Social media does not sell automobiles, does not sell houses, does not sell, I mean, we can make up all the excuses in the entire world. It doesn't sell stereos, it doesn't sell televisions, it doesn't sell investments, it doesn't sell crypto. And yet, how many advertisements do you get for these products? Obviously, social media sells 
low ticket items extremely well and social media quite frankly is just a magnificent entertainment source but while they're being entertained at night thumbing through 300 feet of thumbing your ad your content your message pops up and maybe they stop for a second because doesn't everybody want to have a newer, faster, shinier vehicle, the latest and greatest technology, protected by a full factory warranty, if they knew how affordable it was? Doesn't everybody want that? This is the point of you investing this time that we have here today in educating the client. Now, sorry, I've got to speed up a little bit. I'm enjoying sharing this with you so much, and I get really excited about it because I think social media is the one, one of the most beneficial or the most amazing things that social media will do. When you educate them on the best way to purchase an automobile and the reasons, all the reasons why they should be doing so right now, you want to present choices because when the customer has choices to make, they feel like they're in control. When they're in control, they will make the decision that you want them to make. You want them to come in, call in, email in, and see you so that you can share with them how affordable the vehicle can be. And that's simply by creating a matrix of lease and finance payments with money down and with the minimum amount down. I wouldn't encourage you to do zero down. Let the customer tell you, what if I don't put any money down? What am I looking at in terms of payment? You always want to follow up with, if you can handle a little bit higher payment to not put so much down in the very beginning, then yeah, I think that that's, that's a great idea. That's no problem at all. It won't, you won't just be in an equity position like in these other payment choices that I'm giving you. Remember, remember, our business card reads consultant. So consult with them on the choices that they can make that is the best way to purchase the automobile. And that those choices that you give them, that you're providing via social media, remember it's not really a two-way conversation yet, those choices that you're providing are in the direction of the decision that you want them to make anyway. Quoting payments without taxes. Now you you got to have shoulders like a Cadillac to be able to support this, but it's one way to give them a choice, show them how inexpensive and affordable the vehicle can be considering leasing with 10% down. All I said was 10%. Your customer may not be figuring it out in their mind. Now anybody that knows math, a little tiny bit about math, I think all of us who are pretty good at that, we can pretty quickly come up with $70,000 vehicle, 10%, seven grand down, that monthly payment, holy cow, what if I don't have the seven? And this is the conversation the customer is having in their mind that you stimulated through social media while they're thumbing through 300 feet of thumbing in the evening, being entertained, understand where you're getting a hold of them. This is the reason why, and I don't think anybody talks about why to do social media other than the fact that, well, you can get a great message out there and be top of mind all the time. And while that is true, Look at where you're getting them. The reason why you would want to consider a social media endeavor is that while they're sitting entertaining themselves through 300 feet of thumbing, they're sitting in their lazy boy. They're reclining back. They're lounging. They're, they're being lazy. They're, it's called unwind time. It's the end of the day. And you captivate them when their mind is slow, when they're a little bit sleepy. And maybe this has happened to you as it's happened to me. It happened to me on several occasions, a motorcycle, a couple of boats, an ATV, being bored, right, on the weekend or in the evening. And it happens to me wickedly this time of the year that, you know, as the nights are longer, I don't have as much activity that I can do. It's I can't ride my mountain bike. We can't go boating and fishing. And the motorcycle, the suspension is out of it right now, out being rebuilt. And so I can't ride that. Not that I would want to because it would get really dirty and our trails are closed at this point. The snowmobiling hasn't started. The lake's not frozen. We can't go ice fishing and the ski hills aren't open. We can't go snowboarding and ski. Where, quite frankly, if we could, it could be raining anyway. The bottom line is, does this happen to you? Does it happen to me? You get a little bit bored. And so what do you do? Start thumbing through. The bottom line is while they're thumbing through that 300 feet of social, you need to be an attractive character. You need to captivate their attention and draw them into you. And you can talk about your referral programs as one way to, to attract them. Another way to attract them is with a fancy picture, a great picture. Now, I'm, kudos to all of you that are posting pictures of your customers taking delivery of the vehicle. 
Excellent. That's dynamite. One way to get started. But then think to yourself, if every sales automobile salesperson is doing that, and if every power sports salesperson is doing that, then how am I different? How does that make me attractive? Whereas if you could find a fail picture, maybe somebody who has had, unfortunately, an accident, but survived it really quite well, like the Subaru commercial used to say, yeah, and they survived it. What a dynamite picture to share with people. This time of the year, you need and want the driving dynamics. Number two, this is what happens in the event that you get involved, heaven forbid, a collision, how you walk away from it. Dynamite, having those pictures. And that will make you stand out in the crowd. That'll make, get, that'll attract attention to you. And this will start to stimulate and create those seeds. What Jeff Walker would call them launch seeds, right? Planting a seed in their mind in order to, to meet your great big launch, which would be bringing them into the showroom. If a picture tells a thousand words, then video speaks volumes. Think about how you can integrate video into your social media feeds. And quite frankly, again, nobody really talks about this other than the fact that, oh, pictures tell a thousand words. And video's got to be a whole lot better. Here's the why you want to do video. Are you ready for it? The big secret why you want to do video, and I know what you're thinking, oh, video lasts longer, video is better, and everybody says I should be doing video, and it's the very reason, I have the very reason why you should do video, and it's not what you think. You know the reason why you do video? The reason why I do these free live training sessions with you folks on Instagram, and on Facebook, and the private members group, the Auto Sales Academy. And if you're on Instagram watching me, you want to learn more and get more free trainings, please go over to Facebook and join the Auto Sales Academy. It's only for automobile salespeople. So if you're not in the automotive retail world, if you're not working at a dealership, if you're not a manager or an owner, then you won't be accepted. This is exclusively for the private members of the Auto Sales Academy, this particular group I'm talking about. Video, here's the reason why you wanna do video. This is the reason why I do it. It's easy. It's super easy. Press the red button. That's all you do. Now, shaky video, that's no good. Video that's out of focus, bad lighting, thumbprints, fingerprints all over your camera lens on the backside. Take two seconds and just have a look at what video you could be shooting. It's so easy to do. That's the reason why you do it. And then, of course, you'll capitalize on being that attractive character and reeling people in because other automobile salespeople may not be doing a good job of video. And, of course, the traditional walk around, I, didn't, I don't think, is a great video anymore. It was super when it first came out. But what can we tell them in video that we could now support with email being an attractive character and the only way you get their email address through social media is to ask them, hey, look, if you want to know more information about driving dynamics, about traction control, anti-lock brakes, automatic slip regulator, slow speed stopping, cross-traffic alert, Apple and Android CarPlay, and the infotainment systems, and even find out better things that you can shoot video on that the customer cannot easily find or cannot find anywhere for that matter on the internet, ask them for their email address. It's not really a call to action, but it is a call to action. When we get their email address, now we have traffic that we control. This is how we harvest prospects. This is how you sell 10, 20, and into 30 units per month when the entire industry, the economy, the brand is down. This is how you accelerate. This is how the whole dealership accelerates beyond all of that because it's that top of mind status and leveraging the things that make us the attractive character and draw people in. And the, the, thing, the icing on the cake that you want to do with your social media campaign, which will really reel them in, are the exclusive offers. So the easiest and the smartest way that, that you can finish off and tail off a video that you can include in a picture once you have their email address, send them information, is the advertisement. What is the advertised price that your manufacturer, that your dealership is, or your dealer group, or your dealer association is currently promoting? Because this is what the customer sees in the traditional advertisements anyhow of either digital or traditional advertising. And when they start to see that message, 
they start to believe that is the number, as opposed to them seeing an advertisement coming in to see you because you were the attractive character, which gave them the information that they wanted and the timing is right for them to buy, but they're gonna ask you, okay, how much can you knock off for me? When they see that advertised price over and over again, and you may even say in your video, in any of your posts, the advertised price is our very best price because our customers get to see it too. We have other vehicles, both more and less expensive. There, you just qualified if they did, they cannot afford your advertisement, you qualified your message to them. Remember, this is social, one-way conversation with, we have less expensive vehicles. It's as easy as that. It's exactly what you would talk about if they were standing right in front of you. Now, with respect to your offer, Leverage, and I'm seeing a lot of it, 0%. Everybody loves 0%, subvented rates, lower lower rates. Everybody knows and have heard the, the, the horror stories, and really, they, some of them are really bad. Mortgage payments that came through a renewal that tripled, quadrupled, and those individuals are very stressed right now because they were enjoying an extremely low locked-in rate, whereas the rates have risen sharply and quickly, and that changes the monthly payments substantially. So share with them if you've got 0% on your video, through your emails, in every single one of your pictures, so that you educate them on the choices that they can make, being the attractive character, posting and curating content easily and quickly, just based on the conversation that you would have if they were standing in front of you. And you do this easily with video. Then at the end of the day, what will really get them, what is really going to captivate their attention and give you that attraction strategy that you need is share with them the old payment versus the new payment. Share with them what the old interest rate was versus what the new interest rate was. Share with them what vehicle sold for, the very same vehicle sold for last year, and now what we're selling the new one for this year. And that may include a discount that you have, may include a manufacturer's discount and what the new payment will be. Don't just say, we've got this fantastic product and it only costs this much money because if they have purchased their vehicle outright and they've paid it off because the average age of an automobile in North America is 16 years of age, if they don't have any payments on it, you're taking them from zero to a whole bunch of very expensive payments. But when you compare it, what it was just a year ago or what it was two years ago, in fact, if you want to take it a step further and create a sequence of posts, curating content on this, you could talk about how much an automobile was 20 years ago and the changes in five years, five years, five years, five years, five years, leading all the way up to where your vehicle is now, justifying this, the sudden rise based on inflation of how much automobiles cost. I think what your clients may find out, well, really what they like to hear or what they comprehend is that automobiles have doubled quadrupled in price and that is not true they have risen very sharply unquestionably sharper than at any other point in history but definitely not quadrupled definitely not tripled maybe in some cases almost doubled uh, the actual statistic is 22 from 21 to 22 up 20 percent from 22 to 20 from 21 to 22 pardon me up 23%, from 20 to 21, up 20%. So in the course of two years, yeah, 40%. We, we don't have statistics on 22 to 23 until those are in shortly, but old payment versus new payment. This structures the choices that you give a customer so that you can be that attractive character and bring them in. And then finally, when it comes right down to it, and you're really not sure what to post, because there will be that time where you just sit there like, oh, what do I post? Oh, this is painful. You know what? I'm not going to do it. Social media doesn't sell cars. I've never had anybody come in and say, I saw your stuff. It's really great. I want to buy it. Nobody has, has ever responded to me through Facebook and say, I'll take that. I'll buy that. Nobody's, maybe they have through marketplace. That's a different equation. But general top of mind status, social media posting, I think there's a ton of excuses, and I'm not introducing you to any of them. You've probably gone through them. That's really what I want to get over. You can do this. I will put a link below to a strategy session with me, and I'll share with you an easy series of tactics that are all rolled up into one strategy that you can do, just like we've been going through. Notice how they've been one, two, three. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. No more than that. Three activities at any one time. Pardon me, excuse me, to make it that much better. So if you really get stuck and you don't know what to share with them, just ask them. And ASK is actually an acronym. And my ASK stands for Attitude, Skill, and Knowledge. If your attitude is that you can't do this, then you won't. And so you'll never have any luck with being top of mind through social media that is so inexpensive to do. And easy. Remember, video, press the red button. So the second part of the equation, when you know what to do and you have the skills, you're perfecting the skills because you know the platform, the one platform, as we stated in the very beginning, then you could do something by diving into how the platform works like a poll. Do a quick search on the internet, how to do polls on Instagram, how to do polls on Facebook, how to do polls on YouTube. It is so easy, how to do polls on LinkedIn. It is so easy nowadays. There is no coding that has to be done. You don't have to buy any other software. Most of the platforms have the freedom and flexibility for you to create a poll instantly, quickly. It's a matter of you picking colors and buttons, how many that you want in order for you to create engagement. Remember, I said that word has been overused before, but this is an excellent way, if you believe that that is necessary for you to do, to create engagement. And you start with asking customers. And if that's because your attitude is an attitude of serving. That is where you build your skill and your knowledge in order to be able to do these. And then finally, one of the most effective ones right now is quizzes. Quiz funnels are absolutely magnificent, sweeping the marketplace. Probably the very best social media interactive prospect harvesting tactic going, but that's a rather advanced skill, and that's why I left it right at the, right at the very end of the program. Now, I am over time, as usual, talking way too much. Thank you so much for joining. My, na my name is Bill Harvey with the Auto Sales Academy. Be sure to join me for those of you that are on Instagram and enjoying this on Instagram. That's why I'm shooting on two platforms at the very same time. Not everybody likes the other platform. I really want to encourage you to give some thought to coming over and joining the Auto Sales Academy private members Facebook group. For those of you that are in the private members group, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to know more about the manifesto, our one system, three phases and nine steps, to help you achieve your maximum potential this year, get on track to make a six-figure income by selling 10, 20, and 30 units per month with, here's the most important part, with predictable consistency, then I will leave a link below to a, a discovery call where you can book on my calendar, uh, just a 15-minute call, a real fast, let's get to know each other, totally easy going, no selling, no pitch, superficial call where you can ask me some really pointed questions and I can help you in those very few moments in time get you on track to sell double digits this month. Again, my name is Bill Harvey with the Auto Sales Academy. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a fantastic day, an amazing week, and a terrific weekend. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.